What is up guys? Welcome to a new video. So this is a series where we stalk some Koreans and check out a few picks that are performing a lot better in the new patch. As always, remember that we look at Korea specifically just because they play a lot more than we do and they try out these new things. So in theory, it means that we might find them out a little bit sooner. So we're just going to jump straight in. So the first one is going to be Jarvan for both top and jungle. He's got quite a few buffs recently as well. So remember like the E attack speed buff, the W is more of a shield when around enemies. And a while ago, his ultimate was changed so it damages everyone in it not just the main target. Damage wise, he can actually one shot people. That's probably what he's known for right now with his combo, which is kind of crazy because even if he misses like the key part of it and uses it as a gap closer to get closer, he can still one shot even with enough items. The thing is, it's not just the damage side of things. Sure, that's like the obvious side, but he also performs well as a tank though, like as a distraction, like your W makes him more tanky naturally. You have a knock up, your ultimate to lock people in, like everything actually helps your team quite a lot. Now, one of the biggest things for me at least is that he snowballs very hard as well. Like, you get an early lead and a bit of damage and you're going to really punish people. I've noticed this a lot when I play Jarvan. I actually really enjoy playing Jarvan as well, but it doesn't fall off as much as other carry champions in my opinion. Like he also does it with a few items when he's ahead. Like he only needs like one and he can start to really do some damage. I think he is a real carry champion, that's for sure, but also relatively easy in my opinion. Like you E and Q is sometimes hard to hit, but that's all you have to worry about, right? Your ultimate is targeted and you just whack people. Now last patch and this patch as well, he's gotten a lot more popular in Korea and also jumped up in win rate top lane and jungle though top lane is at the moment just doing a little bit better I think it's mainly because they play him like an assassin bruiser really and you just have more gold in the top lane like Hydra black cleaver more of Mortis, tons of arm reduction and damage with your combo Korea kind of plays him to spank the 1v1 top lane and then go into a very strong mid to late game as well it's actually very hard to stop him killing you to be honest jungle is kind of similar like you're aggressive and you gank a lot with your combo okay so number two in this video is going to be twitch now this one isn't necessarily like brand new this patch but he's just performing so well at the moment over there there is legit no reason why he can't be strong over here as well like just as strong the only difference really is play style and mindset in my opinion so koreans tend to be a bit more aggressive and they be proactive in the game like they have a game plan for example like they'll do more than just kind of sitting back and waiting for stuff to happen now this is really good for twitch though because you play him kind of like an assassin early game so i've looked up a few games and they are just trying to kill people like 24 7 like random stealth in lane stealth after a base roaming like they do not chill out for a second of the game they always want to kill somebody i'm actually gonna say that he's probably more effective than ash and Jin at the moment because of his late game so it sounds super weird right those are the top two and especially after what i just said about like him being really early game focused twitch is actually not the best early game champion or before like 30 minutes he needs items more than other ad's and yes he can stealth around and kill people but he's not gonna win the game that way or team fights that way he just wants to get some more gold i'm not just talking about a little bit better either like from average win rate in kind of before 35 minutes, 30 minutes to highest win rate of any AD carry late game. Twitch is a very, very good hyper carry. After you get your Infinity Edge third, you will ruin people. And that is what we're seeing at the moment. Like basically early, you assassinate if you can and mid to late, you pop out in team fights and ult to hit everyone. Your damage is just insane that late into the game, you have your stealth to start fights as well and get in a good position. You can even flank if you know what you're doing, but sitting at the back is still gonna do a lot of work. I think the mistake people are making is that they think you have to snowball or you have to like perform well early and kill everyone 1v1 that's not actually true sure he is good at it and he can do that but remember you're playing a hyper carry who will just do insane damage in team fights and carry no matter what now next up is one i've been mentioning for a little while on and off but skana is popping off in korea right now especially at lower ranks gold and below this guy is a monster i know you guys might not believe me he's a bit of a random pick and maybe you're like oh fires a skana fetish again but honestly like 100 percent, this guy is broken right now Warrior into Triforce is actually the reason. So it's items. Like before two items, he kind of sucks. After these two, he is so good. He's like a mid-game monster. I think he's going to one-shot you. And I'm not actually kidding. Like a stun into Sheen proc and you are literally dead. It is so strange to me. Like I've been waiting patches for this guy to see if he's just going to explode in popularity. But apparently not. Like even with his ridiculous win rate. The damage you bring is definitely unexpected, which helps a lot. But it's also the utility side, right? Like speed up, shield, stun, ultimate to engage. All of these things mean that even if you get behind, you're still going to be useful. I actually think the build is kind of the problem. So like two damage items and then tank with Sterex and how in the world are you supposed to kill him while you survive as well? Like it's so hard to deal with. But yeah, so in Korea, okay, it's like terrible 
terrible win rate if you get snowballed on. So if your team like craps the bed, you're in for a very rough game because you need those two items. So after that though, if you survive past that point, you become a monster and literally you have one of the highest win rates for the rest of the game in the jungle. Because of his burst and his stun, etc. and stuff, he's like the anti-carry. Like no AD is here specifically either, but carry junglers. Anyone low health like Lee Sin, Kha'Zix, Graves, Nidalee, they will all get ruined by Skana. And I actually think that's where his insane win rate is coming from. They honestly don't stand a chance against you. You'll do more damage than them and you outscale because you become more tanky as well. That is basically the perfect solution to the carry jungle meta. Now I want to talk about my high elo pick now. So we always try to have at least one really good at low elo, which was Skana and one for higher up. Jax is going to be that champion for this video. All of a sudden, like kind of out of nowhere, he's really taken off, especially in the jungle over there. The Blood Razor and Trinity Force build has just jumped up and taken a dump on Korean solo queue at the moment. It's actually like Blood Razor, Triforce and Gunblade. That has a 70% win rate last patch over 400 games in Platinum above, like just that order specifically. And that's higher than I think I've ever seen the most popular build for a champion. Again, it's a lot like Wukong. So before we had these kind of carry junglers who were super, super good early, snowball the game out of control before the late game ones could have really come back into it. Now though, it's kind of carry junglers who kick into gear mid game and still carry later out scaling and beating the other ones. Jax is actually the perfect champion for this really. Like this build has so much damage now. And after that, you can go more tanky, like armor, Sterex, Magic Resist, Guardian Angel, whatever you need. So if you love going 1v5 and actually coming out on top and winning, then this is probably going to be the build for you. Like what I love personally and why Korea is using it so much is because it's really up to you a lot of the time. Some games your team is just going to get ruined before you can get going and it happens like it's just normal in league, I guess. But a lot of the time you're going to get to mid game just a bit behind even or slightly ahead and you'll be able to carry even if your team is bad. I think that's kind of the dream for most players, right? Like a champion that can actually carry bad teammates, but there's a few things for the higher ranks, okay? One, you are super squishy with this. So if you get caught, you're going to be dead and you have to be careful about the time to go in, which kind of is down to a better player, I guess. You also need time in the game. At lower elo, I think it's more common to spiral out of control. Like if a lane dies for once, for example, then they're going to keep on dying. Rather at high elo, they might just play safe. And finally, like you need to be patient in the game. You need to gank correctly at the right times and know your power points that come with items. So basically the correct way to play Jax. You can still do this at lower ranks for sure. Like 100% is so good. But in Korea, at least it's performing amazing amazingly well higher up rather than lower down. Now Wukong is another one who likes Skana actually. I kind of talk about like off and on for being good, but I think it really depends on the other picks and how good they are against him. Let's just get a few misconceptions out of the way though about Wukong, which might actually change your mind. So he is good early, but he doesn't really snowball very hard and take over the game. He's actually better in late game team fights. People think he's a bad jungler, but actually he has a better win rate in the jungle at the moment in Korea. And you think he's just there for crowd control, but he's better played with damage and being an actual carry. Like you pick the right time to go in and you explode on everyone. One. That was a bad phrase, but some of those might seem obvious, but people say it a lot and I think that's part of the issue. Like, he's not played how he should be. As a jungler, your early clear is okay, your ganks are average, but when you get that ultimate of yours, you're really going to do a lot of work. And I think it's kind of funny because right now we're in this weird spot with the junglers. Like, like carry junglers aren't amazing, right? And he's letting these others come back in. Wukong might be squishy, but he does a huge amount of damage now and it really preys on a lot of picks that are popular like Nivea, maybe Victor as well. They can't get away. Ash and Jin the same. You kind of have to flank with these, get on top of them and you're going to destroy them, which is perfect. Like even with the tower first blood as well, I think games are lasting a bit longer. This is also a really big deal. It's roughly lasting like 30 to 35 minutes maybe. And we're seeing like more picks that can carry at that kind of stage in the game. Like early they do okay, I guess nothing special, but then really take it into another gear later. And before it was kind of too risky to do that, but now we seem to be able to get away with it. So next up is a little bit different. Well, it's science support, which we kind of mentioned a little bit before, but specifically with a Jin as the AD carry. So the the Sion and Jin lane is disgustingly good and in my opinion is one of the biggest reasons he is the best support in Korea at the moment. Sion can charge at people, poke, knock up and last forever, all of which are great for Jin who needs someone in front to absorb the damage for him. Now you have a ton of activators for his W as well actually, like it's the chain crowd control more than anything. Your ultimate from Sion into Jin's W into Q knock up, like what are you even supposed to do against that if you don't flash the first part of it? We saw this in the LCS a few weeks ago I think, but it's been popular in Korea for a long time. Like Sion is a great kill lane because of how much CC and damage he offers. But it's kind of just like another level of kill lane with a Jin in there as well. And I haven't really mentioned this before because it's like, I don't want it to be only relevant for pre-made bot lane players, I guess. I don't know. It's just way too good not to mention it now, I think. And it kind of amplifies everything they are both really good at. The synergy between them is off the charts. Sun support and top actually are both still super good just because of his kit really more than anything. Like basically it's the best tank you can actually play. Lasts the longest, does damage even when you build full tank and has a 
ton of crowd control. You even have a shield as well to make it worse and you're passive to just waste even more time. Like as a support, right, Sun has been a thing in Korea for a long time. Especially right now though with this patch, it's just ridiculous. Jin and Nash being the most popular and both are really good with him. It isn't just Jin. So the last one for this video though is just talking a bit about Echo Top. Now the new Triforce build is everywhere in Korea at the moment and this video is all about those kind of Korean trends, I guess. So I feel like I have to mention it. It's basically the most popular carry build and pick right now, even more than Gangplank with how strong he is. It's kind of seen as an aggressive choice that scales later as well. So Triforce into tank or into frozen mallet to be seriously annoying and win those 1v1s. The build actually has some decent win rates over a good sample of games. So it's definitely working. And in my opinion, it's just like a really good pick to climb. That is why I wanted to talk about it here. It's one of those things where if you get ahead, you have that damage to kill people, but you also have the defense to survive and play for your team as well, like to help them out. I think he's the most well-rounded thing you can actually play top lane throughout the game once you've learned him and his damage properly. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a look into the Korean solo queue meta in 616. Remember to like and share if you did, but for now, let's go to the robots.